You know, everybody's got a to-do list. Drop off the dry cleaning, pick up some milk. Here's an idea. Let's add save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. And the good thing is you don't have to drop off or pick up anything. All you have to do is go to Geico.com, and in 15 minutes, you could be saving 15% or more on car insurance. Extra money in your pocket. It just may be the most rewarding to-do you do today. Now, Podcast One brings you Spike's Car Radio. A downloadable Cars and Coffee, hosted by writer, comedian, and automotive enthusiast, Spike Ferriston. Now, here's Spike. Uh, welcome to Spike's Car Radio. Um, maybe you can tell by the, the boom, maybe it sounds different to you. We are uh, not in Malibu today. We're not in Beverly Hills. Well, we are in Beverly Hills, but somewhere different. McLaren of Beverly Hills for their open house. It's a, it's a little quiet here, though, guys. There's no one here yet. I think we're here before the big open house they have here. People today, don't right? get to open or houses the, at 930. The big shoppers <laughs> are rolling in after lunch, <laughs> after some cocktails. Yeah. And you probably recognize one of those voices, of course. Uh, the real Zuckerman is here with us today. And uh, the other feller is Christopher John Wilson, C.J. Wilson, my friend, a former Major League Baseball player and now a dealership magnate. Right? How many dealerships do you own, CJ? Uh, 15 now. 15. <laughs> a mere 15 dealerships. <laughs> it, the Baker's dozen. <laughs> does, it feel, does it feel strange to you to be in a McLaren dealership that isn't your dealership? Completely. Although, ironically, the new general manager here at the store was the guy that sold me all my cars when I was playing for the Rangers and uh, the Angels. Wow. Um, so that P1 that you and I drove in Car Matchmaker came from here? Yeah, the guy with the pocket square over there actually sold me that car um, back in the day. Wow. What a so, dandy. Yeah. <laughs> so, they are dressed very nice, Zuckerman. I, mean, I, li- I appreciate that. You know, I appreciate a well-dressed man in a place well, like this. I, I think he likes English 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 style. Do, you, yeah. do they have to sport like, a, yes. like an English style? Yeah, <laughs> we, 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 we encourage at our, at our McLaren dealerships, we encourage a, a, either a suit and tie or a, you know, a shirt and tie and then some sort of fashionable sock thing going on or and whatever. And what, what do you do? Where, where, first of all, where are your McLaren dealerships? Once uh, in Scottsdale, Scottsdale right? and Chicago. And Chicago. Yeah. And, and uh, do you put on a dandy suit? Uh, yeah. No, I, I have, <coughs> from my baseball days, you know, I've got plenty of fancy suits with purple linings and all that kind of stuff, you know? I mean, you've seen my car, so of course my suit <coughs> collection is, is pretty wacky. Sibili- what do they call that color? Sibilis Pearl? Cerberus. Cerberus Pearl. Cerberus Pearl. <laughs> That's a horrible color. Cerberus Red. No, it's an amazing color. <clears throat> I, I met you on Car Matchmaking, and I remember going down there and, and at my little ghetto warehouse. I didn't quite know who you were, to be honest with you, because I'm a Red Sox fan, and I didn't follow the Angels, and I like the Daggers. Dodgers. And, and, you know, I heard you guys were going to be on the show. But I love baseball, so I was excited. And you, you meet CJ for the first time, and we're talking about, you know, you know how this thing car guys do when you first meet another car guy, and you're like, yeah, well, I got a new GT3 coming in. But uh, uh, you know that thing I'm talking about, Zagreb, where you're kind of proffering you're what you own and you're what imagine. you have? It's, it's, like, <clears throat> it's like the way big fish swim next to yes. each other, and they size each other up right. to feel yeah. like, eh. And uh, it's the first bite. Everything that I said, CJ was said, I'm getting three of those. <laughs> <laughs> new GT3, I'm getting four of those. Uh, P1, I've got one. It's right over there. He just had everything. I was like, Matt, who the hell is this guy? Where did but he come from? But I don't get from? all three of them at the same time. I've had, like, you know, it's like... I know, but I didn't understand any of, of it. Each. I didn't under... I, uh, to me, you were just the guy who's throwing fastballs for the Angels, and I right. had no idea how hard Just some dumb you schlub were. that, you know... Is Not dumb. Get... No, the one thing you, you, you know about... a typical baseball player, <clears throat> like, I, I guess, projection is people think that a pro athlete... Um, that likes cars is out there, you know, losing two hundred grand on a Rolls Royce Wraith or something. But I'll, right. I'll subscribe to that <clears throat> prejudice. Yeah. Yeah. So right. it's okay. Right. So it actually I helps you me out. Dumb when I met you, it, it helps me out. <laughs> it helps me out because I, I can kind of sneak in. I can, I can, I can have that as a sort of front, and then sneak in the side door with my collector car thing. Keep going, you know. Man. I gotta go get a water. Okay. Get, get a water, but okay. And and so as long he he won't appreciate this part of the conversation. So I'm going to ask you. You notice there were cake pops over there for the grand opening. Correct. Could you throw those across the room and hit somebody? You know, it's funny you should ask because I was actually on a TV episode where I uh, I was on the Mindy show and I did hit Mindy Lahiri in the head with a cupcake from about 50 feet away. So yes, you, you see, this is what I like about you. Is that it's a arm, true story. Arm is a weapon. Mm. Yes. I, I like the notion of, that you can use your arm to this day as a weapon. You could throw something across Wilshire Boulevard and hit that guy outside the pharmacy with. Are a you still pop. that accurate? What, what the, show did you say you were on? Uh, the mini show, the mini project. Oh, 
What is that? The Mindy Project? Oh, the Mindy. Mindy Project. Mindy. Yeah. And you threw a cupcake across the room. How many takes did it take? It was a wedding scene, and um, the idea was that she actually was trying to, to help break up a wedding that was getting ruined. And uh, then I accused her of eating all the meatballs in the spread, and then called her meatball, and then was somewhat the jock bully, you know, and then was firing probably, you know, I mean, I'd say a good 65 feet, 70 feet. Uh, cupcakes and they're like okay throw it around her it's okay to hit the body but don't hit the head and so you know in terms of accuracy i did get a couple body shots in but i did glance one off the forehead oh you messed up her hair (laughs) you messed up her hair so they were the the hair and makeup guy was like oh god not again how hard is it to throw a cupcake accurately it's not a very it's more round hard thing no right? but it's 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 really like you have this to is by, by the way i love the way cj can answer these questions <laughs> right. did you he's see him very he just went to work scientifically <laughs> and he's about to give a great answer go ahead you, you have to you, you can't just pick it up and throw it you have to kind of give it that little bounce like you know is this a is this a c cup or a b cup you know you have to kind of feel it what? out <laughs> then you can <laughs> then you can really make right, a forget everything make I a true said. make a true assessment of the weight i it's, like it's about car- the weight and the density if it's really dense it's easy to throw like a ball of foil right you know you can nail somebody with that because you can <laughs> ball it up really tight but uh, something really floating right. like a paper ball is he doesn't talk like a baseball player does he no we went <clears> straight <throat> to dr we went straight to mr spock yeah right to mr spock right. he i knew we were in a new space when um i said which is faster the p1 or your fastball right i was just trying to make a joke in the car and what did you say in car match figure do you remember uh you very quickly without I, even I, taking I said, a second well zero to 60 my fastball is like you know i can go 60 feet in 0.4 seconds with a 90 <laughs> mile an hour fastball <laughs> So that's that's faster. He would accelerate faster than a P one, clearly. A fa- uh, faster than any just car. that he would know that and be able to make that scientific calculation that quickly and answer that question. Like it wasn't a question. I was just joking around, trying to get some laughs in the car. But that's what we like about you, CJ. This is going to be fun. That's it. Okay. Well, I guess I'm done here. <clears throat> no, we've got a long way to go, my friend. Where does it? Uh, I, I, you know, you're doing so much right now. You're racing for Porsche, mm-hmm. right? You've got all these dealerships. Which is your primary dealership? The Porsche Fresno. Yeah, I'd say Porsche one? Fresno. Fresno. I just uh, sound like Fresno. Trump there for a second. Fresno. 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 <laughs> um, so yeah, I, uh, when I bought the stores up there, they're all in the same parking lot. Right. And so I kind of float between all of them, but my main title is general manager of Porsche. And Fresno. why, and, and where did you w- decide that you were going to be a guy who sells cars? Like, where does this begin? Is this like a lo- a childhood dream? Yeah, actually and, and, as and, ironic as it is, it's okay to have more than one childhood dream, you know? So I wanted to, <laughs> Um, first, first thing off is oh, I. Oh no! This again. This is I, like I'm going to yeah. interrupt for one. This bothers me again. I think that it's it's piggy to be really great at more than one thing in life. <laughs> Most people aren't good at anything, and then and then maybe a guy like me is good at one thing. But you're so you, good at it okay. that you have a garage full of other you're good, good things. at other things. Oh, like and I'm not going to say I'm good at. No, I'm good at one thing. He can do stand up. No. He's great at road rage. He's yes, great at eating. That. He can really eat. He's good at, uh, he's he's very good at picking good. people apart. What's that? He's good at He's pick- very good at analyzing people and yeah, but that's part of his business. He can do yeah, that right. very well. But but he's But he, we're talking his, about as a child. But wait a second. As a child he decided he wanted to be a baseball player. He decides he wants to be a car dealer. He's a race car driver. How many things can this he's good looking, he's got a model wife. How many things have to go right for this guy? He's so jealous of yes. you, CJ. It's not right. <laughs> It's just not right. See, the thing is, if I hug you him, have he'd to punch learn me. to accept. Yeah. I can't even hug him right now because he'll punch me. No, so no, he's, got all, he's aggressive. See, got he's got all, too much caffeine. You have caffeine to in learn right to accept that these people are okay, walking go around, sucking, and they're not like tell us. They, they, they have. Listen, they I had a these, miserable childhood. Okay? Did not. I did, 100. percent Yeah, no, I did. What was I, miserable I, about it? Um, you know, the typical. I met your dad. He was a sweetheart of a guy. He is now. Yeah, yeah. So the first 12 years of my life were pretty scary. Um, you know, and so you know, you know, it's like um. I had some uh, my I was raised mostly by my uh, by my grandparents um, because they live close by. My parents were both, you know, they split up when I was young and mom was really into cars. Actually, dad was super into cars. Um, my dad was on a he was on a pit crew for a race team when I was a kid. So I no kidding. Go, yeah. I what race a, team? Um, it was a it was actually Danny McAllister's race team. I remember that. And the driver's name was Robbie Flock. <laughs> and they raced dirt track midgets. And then they eventually they did like F2000. And so I did go-karts and stuff when I was a little wow. kid. And uh, so we, cool. we ran out of money and it was too unsafe. So my mom put the kibosh on it and my dad was kind of bummed because he likes racing a lot. 
Was that his primary job? Working no, no, no. The pit that crew? was just this like a weekend deal. Weekend fun. Yeah, my Robbie did. Flock. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have names like that anymore. You know who Robbie Flock's rival was? A guy named Sleepy Trip. If that's not the best <laughs> race car name ever. I mean, come In the, on. Mid, the dirt midget race Yeah, class. Zuckerman, did your dad even come close to approaching anything on the weekends like this? Like, my dad pretty much just started cracking beers on a Friday night and no, my playing dad did cards that too. and smoking. That was the thing, but. Well, wait. And and you know this I these California dads these these dads out here they these these racing on the weekends nothing right you okay dead. my dad worked and smoked that, <laughs> right, and and, exactly. and he didn't do anything else all week wow. long except <clears throat> maybe then take a nap yeah that was it so that's pretty cool that that stuff's happening would he take you out to the track yeah no that was the whole thing that was babysitting so it was like when it was my weekend to go with go away with dad. We'd drive up to Saugus or Ascot or wherever the racetracks were, and I'd be hanging on the fence getting sprayed with dirt and methane fumes, you know, so <laughs> from <clears throat> uh, wow. so methanol or whatever it is that they run. So, um, you know, my dad was really encouraging with baseball, though. I was very hard on myself because I felt like unless I was perfect, I wasn't going to succeed right. as a baseball player. So I'd be depressed after a game if I only had one hit or whatever. I would, like, beat myself up mentally. So I would actually— so, But which was the bigger urge? Was it baseball or cars? Uh, both, because I understood that cars would be get baseball. Baseball, right so if I was good enough at, at baseball then um, <laughs> so cars were the motivation to be good right. at baseball to get the cars you know <clears throat> all right tell tell everyone the story one of my favorite stories I think you told us uh, out at Bill's on the porch with Jerry was the story of the coach telling you that you should quit baseball yeah how old were you I was because uh, I think because I think it really illustrates who you are uh, and what kind of player you are and how you approach the game right so this is my first year playing baseball Right. right. So I stepped and, up. And you're how old? I was eight and a half. So, eight and a half. Yeah. Okay. You know, so um, most kids start when they're four or five. They start in T-ball. Right. And, and they, you know, they just go through the normal pet. Then there's yep. coach pitch and whatever. I went straight to kid pitch. So the kids were already pitching by that point, And the kids that were hitting had been hitting for three or four years already. Mm -hmm. So um, I had a good arm because my dad and I would play catch, you know, like a field of dreams. Like, but what's hey, the dad, story? The, the, the guy, the yeah, coach so, who so comes up I to was, you. I was the second worst player on the team <coughs> at the time. And, um, <laughs> at, at eight and a half. At eight and a half. Where yeah, all the kids um, are bad players. All full of energy. You know, I'd be like chasing, chasing the ball around and everything. But I'd fire it off. Like, I'd get so amped up when the ball would get hit to me, I'd fire it off into the next field. I'd throw it like over the first <laughs> baseman's head. Because they had me playing third base. This is how, right. how good of a coach he was. I'm a lefty and I'm playing third base. Okay. Clearly this guy is not, <laughs> you know, like Billy Martin or uh, Buck Showalter. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So, um, and I was a miserable hitter. So he kept trying to get me to swing with using a smaller and smaller bat, thinking that that would help me make contact or something. But basically, three quarters of the way through the season, he said, you are so terrible at this. You should quit and go play <laughs> soccer because you'll never be any good at baseball. This is this just, is you just don't have it. This is what they said to an eight and a half year old. You just don't have it. I have a nine and a seven right now. I can't right. even and, imagine. And here's the funny thing. Anything so other than a, wait, wait, wait. I can't even imagine anything other than a pat on the back. And good job. Let's do it again and, next year. And right. maybe tell the you, parents, like, you know, you can say to the parents, hey, listen, you know, your son maybe isn't for this or this isn't. No, for son, I, maybe, I mean, these know. days, no, everybody gets right. a trophy. Good for participating. Girls can play it. That's the, that's the environment. In. No, and the right. normal, so this this yeah. coach says to you, don't play baseball anymore at eight and a half. Right. right? And I looked at him and I said, well, because at, at this point I had already made my life plan. I'd already filled out the business plan, you know, for the next 50 years of my life. and knew exactly what I was going to do. Yeah, for sure. You wrote it down. Yeah, I did. Do you still have that document? Uh, I gave it to my mom, so it probably <laughs> it's, she's a hoarder, so it's probably stuffed away in a closet somewhere. Oh no. Um, or my, I, you know, whatever. So, uh, so what do you do? How do you react to that? I just looked at him and I said, well, uh, you know, Coach Golden, I'm actually going to be a major league all star one day. And you'll you'll regret this, Coach Goldman. Right, Golden. Yeah, George Golden. Golden. But that, is this him? the same story? Yeah, I don't his, know that his this son this was named Garrett Golden. Yeah. So then, so then a couple years later, I'm playing for Texas. You know, and I'm uh, at this point. All right, this isn't the story I wanted to tell. But, yeah, the story you, was the story where the coach tells you you shouldn't be playing ball. Yeah. And then you go home that summer and you buy a book. Yes. Okay. okay that, that's exactly. So I always felt like there's, so. So there's was that eight and a half? Uh, well, yeah, I was nine at that point. Right? I was nine. So that off season, <laughs> uh, that off season, my dad got me. My my birthday is in November, so my my dad got me um, Wade Boggs's book. Wade Boggs at the time, Red Sox, right? Perennial batting title. It was him and Tony Gwynn basically he had the highest batting average in the eighties and nineties. They hit like. And by the way, I can't believe Wade Boggs wrote a book. <laughs> right. Well, it was, it was, and it wasn't called Chicken and Beer. So, um, so the. Um, <laughs> The, uh, the, you know, the, the book basically put me f really far ahead because I all of a sudden developed an advanced knowledge of hitting 
that nine-year-olds don't have. Right. So at nine have. years old, you buy this book, you read this Wade Boggs book. And it's it, like it tells you God. how it's to. Like a, it's like being born again. That's and it that. tells you how to hit like a major leaguer. Yes, exactly. Right? Like how to recognize the spin on different pitches and like the color and everything. <laughs> Incomprehensible to any See, now, other nine-year-old in the this world. Is what, this is I what's funny. Story, so maybe yeah. that helps. I, I didn't know. I thought this was like 14 or 15. I didn't know it was nine years old. I missed yeah. that part of it. So you come back the next season. You've read the, this book. The are you with this coach? But are you with this coach again against that coach against that coach but you've processed intellectually and you know those you know those memes where like somebody does something cool and then they deadpan to the camera like what's up now bitch like every time i'd get a hit <laughs> against george golden's team forever against that it was like like i hit a homer off his son and they're like mm. they just stand there like, <clears throat> the ball's flying over the fence and i'm just like oh ain't that precious okay. and you that's know? how you said you've always approached baseball very yeah. cerebrally you've you, you you you're able to i remember you also saying you were able to remember how batter swings went yes. like what shape they took and throw yeah 2010 2011 you're in the world series right yeah. is it worse there <laughs> or is it the same no is by that, that point game? by that point i had already had enough success and been a closer which i felt helped me out a lot because when you're a closer and you're pitching at the end of the game when you could you know f it up and lose the game uh, that's the most pressure you can feel. You know, when your whole team has done everything right and you're the only thing standing between them and victory. Um, and, you know, I had a really good record as a closer because I felt like that pressure, I couldn't let them down. You know, right. it's like that older brother syndrome or something like that where you just want to help and you want to make things good go well. But, um, you know, when you do lose a game for somebody else, it is the worst feeling. And I, I would go up to pitchers when I was a reliever and apologize to them like, hey, I'm sorry I cost you a win today. And they're like, well, you know, thanks for saying that. Right, right. You know, right. Just don't do it next time. Like, no, because most people don't mm. take accountability like that. They always, they blame it or they drink it away and forget it happened. You know. Didn't you tell me the car psychs you up for a game? Always, always, yeah. right? Always. Yeah. So the P one gets you confident, right? Well, Which cars make you feel the most confident? Well, yeah. You know, I had a career GT um, w when I had financially no business buying it, and I was a relief pitcher. That is and fantastic. It was the first year so you spent all your money on a career GT. Okay, think about this, right? They always say like what's a how do you how do you allocate your spending? Um, I thought about it like what's my actual cost of living and I'm going to spend every other dime of it on a car. <laughs> That's Mr. awesome. Formula. This is huh? this he's like Mr. Formula. Like you know, I, I always think about him like the story of the coach telling him he sucks. That would have set the stage to become a drug addict. That's <laughs> no you <the thing laughs> should have become a had drug a, addict or a was, thief. <laughs> that's the, that's that set a pattern though because then I had other coaches along the way that also told me I was shitty or whatever and I was then I got really confrontational Just about it. Just get immune to it, right? Well no no but it actually fueled me because I was able to take that negative negativity and be like I'm going to prove this I'm going to prove them wrong. You know what so, I mean? So I imagine. So wait. So I imagine. I want to get back to these cars to the ball yeah. field. You, you, you're, you're in the Carrera GT. You psych yourself up. You get to the game. You lose. Do you drive the Carrera GT home? Or a Corolla. <laughs> well, no, but that was the thing. I did have, so when I, my rookie year. <laughs> did you have losing cars yeah, I had, in the lot? What I like to call is I had blue collar cars. <laughs> you know, so I had an F-250 uh, diesel that was like my tow, tow vehicle to take my track cars around and stuff. Okay. It was like an 03 with 100,000 miles So that would it. be waiting in the lot for you if you lost? No, sometimes. I mean, I had a, but like, you know, you always have to have two cars. So if I felt like I didn't deserve to <laughs> Why drive. Why do you always have to have two cars? What do you mean? In the ballpark? I'm no, talking about games. In life. I'm, I'm saying huh? in life. Uh, yeah, I'm in talking life. about baseball. I, I, I'm talking about the psychology of going to the stadium and what you need to pitch a game. If, if I pitched poorly, I would go work out after the game and punish myself. Okay. I would go run on the treadmill until I felt like I was going to puke or I'd lift weights and just right. be like, you okay. stupid piece of shit. You and then you would better. get in the P1 and drive it home or the Carrera GT. Yeah, I mean, it didn't happen as much when I got to the P1 level because at that point I was already pretty, you know, my routine was pretty good. And how do the, fa the fans love these these displays of yes. supercars? They do. Hell yeah, because I would actually stop and sign autographs. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. like most guys that blow out of there. <laughs> Although I did have a situation in my black and Ascot CGT. Um, a guy dropped a blue paint pen on the car. <laughs> oh, jeez. The outside of the car was wrapped, but it like a little splatter hit the inside of the Ascot and a little bit on my steering wheel. And I just <laughs> said, step away from the vehicle, sir. He's like, I'm sorry, because he was trying to do this thing where like he fist bumped me with the pen, and I was like, don't fist bump me with the pen. Like, that's a, Put the cap on the pen and walk away. You know? yeah. I hate so, so to this day... If someone sees a paint pen, I get like that nails on the chalkboard thing because I remember like, ree, ree, oh, ree. that's awful. I how, ended up cleaning it up with some soda how, water. How do you control, or uh, you did pretty well with controlling the crazy baseball custom car guy, right? I'm sure there were guys on the team and guys in, in the major leagues who were 
really screwing up cars. There was with some bad flagrant, ideas. flagrant right. poor taste. It was amazing. <clears throat> I had a, we had a teammate. Who, who's the worst? Alfonso Soriano. <laughs> <laughs> what did I he Alfonso. do? <laughs> yeah, I Alfonso. Alfonso Soriano was paid very well. Soriano <laughs> Customs. Is he a friend of yours? Uh, no, but he's a teammate. Okay. So he was, but he loves the car. I'm sure. But let's hear about his bad taste. He was like a caricature of a. Of a he was a movie character playing a real person. <laughs> you know, like he had at one point. I, I, well. I, I don't want to get too uh, into his personal life, but he um, he used to carry around a bag that had um, party devices in it, and one of those party devices was a stack of at least ten thousand dollars cash. Right. So, to inst- and what do you mean instantly party st- party devices? What does that mean? Like he'd have a boombox and maybe some <coughs> other party <coughs> so uh, like favors. A party kit. A party kit. Yes, exactly. But the party kit would sometimes be for like illicit purposes. I, I and see. So, um, right. Kind of so like, like Matt Lauer's closet, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So he didn't have the locking button on his locker, but he would keep things in his lock in his locker because we at Texas we had a huge, I would say like a three foot wide locker, and then we'd have a drawer that was fairly really deep on you know like three feet deep and, mm-hmm. and three feet wide. So um, he would slide that out, and he's like, "Hey, if you need any luck, just rub this thing," you know. And he would he, he kept a, a, a lucky. Uh, female anatomical simulator in his uh <laughs> <laughs> well what is now what about the cars what did he do with his he cars? had an h2 hummer um, right with uh tvs that were actually pointed outwards so when he'd be driving <laughs> down the freeway playing the yin yang twins video you could see it because f- he had from your car, <laughs> from your car. <laughs> and he had uh, instead of the grill it was his signature in solid metal. Oh, that's awesome. This then, is, I love this guy. <laughs> yeah. This it was guy, all white. He should customize cars. White. That sounds great and so far. He had, um, you know how the Hummers had like little bits of like black plastic all over it? Right. Well, all that was chrome. The wheels, it was like 24-inch <clears throat> wheels. Um, and it instead of the, the big like, I, uh, it's almost like, you know, in the ZR1 when they came out with it, they had like the, the cutout on the hood. Right. Well, he had something like that, but it was a home plate in chrome. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was, and then it was a, it was like a photorealistic <laughs> drawing of him, like with his home run swing, like that. You know what I mean? And then, and then That's his awesome. signature underneath, and it wow. just said twelve. So his number is twelve. So it's twelve everywhere. Um, Did he, he give the cars away when he was done? Because no one's buying that. No, I think one of his wives drove that. <laughs> That's like a the Michael Jordan car worth five dollars. <clears throat> well, you know, whenever he, you whenever you plaster your name all over a car, it's hard to sell that thing, right? No, it, I mean no one's really that big of a fan, and if they are, they probably don't have the money to buy it. They probably the, like one yeah, of the fans skin, don't you know? have the money to buy that. And even if you do, don't you want your own car? Well, there was a remember the did I ever tell you about the Jerry Seinfeld edition Mercedes that oh, I oh, that oh, Jerry had? He had a custom Mercedes made. By the factory, and it only played, played one song. Boom, 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 no, boom, you, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that they should have done that. That would have been better than what they made. It was an E fifty five that was jacked up and faster. And when you open the door, it said Seinfeld edition on the door Horrible. and had purple light. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, interesting. This is back. Like, during Michael Richards <laughs> calls you immediately. Yeah. He's like. No, it was, door. you know, it was that car. I was single at the time. So, you know, Jerry was like, I'm going to get rid of this car. I'm like, oh, please just mail it right to me. I want this. This is perfect. Because yeah, I but bought an E55 my friends in the cool car. It was, and it, it was, was this, funny for you to be driving. This wasn't an E55. This was j- a jacked up E55 custom with more horsepower. Okay. They really tricked the thing out, chassis, the whole deal. <clears throat> what I didn't know is they, they snuck it into the country <laughs> through mm. DOT. Somehow it was not registerable. But I said, send it out. Let me drive it. And I, you know, I remember opening the door, and it said Seinfeld edition. And I went, all right, already this is just wrong. This feels really wrong. And he had, uh, but I thought I was going to buy it, right? I think it was $75,000. And it had this sticker, this inspection sticker in the front, all the New York stuff that you put in the front windshield. And I had my guys remove all that stuff. <clears throat> and then the next day, I decided, I, I don't want this car. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's right. Oh boy. <laughs> this is the only time... I can remember, and I've known Jerry since the show, since the late 90s, where he's called me screaming at me, just screaming, because that car, he had pulled a lot of strings to get that car registered, apparently. It was very difficult, and when I, when I scraped <laughs> off everything, he you said, cut all the strings. I remember this is what he said. He goes, Spike, now they have to export the car and crush it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what? He goes, they're going to crush the car because of you. I said, boy, I'm really sorry about that, <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> and they exported the car and they crushed it. Are you serious? Me- Mercedes gave them t- uh, something new. But, yeah, that car was done. 
That, that car was tough. So he had a right to be angry with it's me. It's amazing that you guys are still friends over that. If, if <laughs> yeah. they should have put you in the if trunk it weren't, <laughs> for the it, crush. If it Some people would have. Like yeah. they, they immediately felt bad, and they gave him a new car. So he, uh, money-wise, he was fine. He made a little money on Mon- the deal. Money-wise, but he's okay. how funny is it that a car is shipped to Mexico <laughs> crushed and we would riff about why you couldn't crush it here why do you have to ship it to mexico and crush it just became this funny little footnote to this crazy world of cars we're doing all right we got to take a break guys when we come back i promise we're going to talk mclaren we're here in mclaren uh, by ogara their big open house here in beverly hills um and we're going to get into that new 2019 mclaren center we'll be right back let's talk about amsoil you know why i like amsoil because they're a bunch of car people They're gearheads, they're into all kinds of power sports, and basically they get it. Recently, Amsoil created a guide to increasing horsepower in your vehicle. It has insider tips from some of the best in the business on coaxing more power out of your engine. Who doesn't want more power out of their engine? You can get your copy free at amsoil.com slash spike. While there, find more about Amsoil Synthetic Motor Oil, too, like how Amsoil Signature Series Synthetic Motor Oil delivers 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than required by a leading industry standard. Go to amsoil.com slash spike to get your free insider's guide to increasing horsepower. Podcast One remembers broadcasting legend Dick Enberg. A hearty welcome to Steve Kerr. What a thrill to have listened to you all these years. He's basketball Hall of Famer John Calipari. You uh, still have a great voice of all time. Tennis Hall of Famer Billy Jean King. I just hope everyone listening understands what an icon you are. He's my all-American friend Bill Walton. Dick Enberg, I love you. Listen to his amazing stories and his final interviews on Sound of Success, the Dick Enberg Podcast, only on Podcast One or the Podcast One app. You're listening to Spike's Car Radio. All right, welcome back to Spike's Car Radio. We're here with our guest, C.J. Wilson. We're here at McLaren of Ogara. I want to have you here, of course, because you have those two McLaren dealerships. Let's talk about the, uh, the 2019 McLaren Senna that was just announced over the weekend. We're recording this on Tuesday, early December, but you're probably listening to it a little later here in the holiday season. A nice Christmas gift. Yeah, from the, the folks at McLaren. Yeah, the uh, the idea behind the car is to just have the ultimate no compromise <clears throat> street legal but barely, you know, track car. So it's it's, it's so going to it's part of the ultimate series lineup. Let me run through some stats on it. Twin turbo 4 liter V8 to produce a claimed peak of 789 wow. horsepower, 590 foot pounds of torque. Wow. That's adequate. That's adequate. <laughs> this car Now, am I wrong is the 720S their their last model is that as fast as the P1? So the 720S, because it doesn't have the hybrid system, um, it actually makes almost the same amount of power as the turbo engine without the hybrid from the P1. The P1 made 737. This makes 720. So it's a comparable car for a lot less, right? Yeah, I mean the the, the you, we're you looking see, at two of them right now. Yeah, we have beautiful. the Velocity car here, which is the kind of red fade in the front. Right. So the, the cool and what thing, is the, that blue behind it? Because that's, that's killing that's me. That's right Paris now. blue. It looks like a lot like Voodoo. So the, what they're doing is they're naming all of their. They're doing the 60s Porsche style, where all the yeah. colors are named after a location, like right. Irish green or Mexico blue or India red. So Paris blue, kind of like the Ferrari French blue. Yeah, right? it's, 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 that's a very similar to Azuro Dino, actually. That's gorgeous. Yeah, but um, so this, the 720 has taken a lot of the cues of that sort of melted alien spaceship kind of uh, right from the P1 ethos. Yeah. yeah, exactly from the P1. I love these cars. You know, so, I, had, I hadn't driven them until uh, Car Matchmaker, and I was so pleasantly surprised at how easy they are to drive around town. Well, my the my first drive awesome. was like down driving downtown to traffic, right. and I was so comfortable. Right, and I, it was kind of blown away it's by the suspension. It. They use the fully hydraulic multi-link suspension, so you get cross linkage from the front right to the back left, and vice versa. So, um, so, so this this new Senna degrees. car, it's a little polarizing. The design <laughs> is it's funky. Uh, is, it's is a little funky. funkier than I thought. I saw it a year ago, um, actually, in the design studio. When is was, this the one we were talking about that's got the center seat? No, that's the BP twenty three. That's the new one that's coming out. That's the, they're only making 100 of. That's the one that's going to be like a Bugatti Chiron So fighter. how many of these Senna's are they going to make? 500. 500. 120 to the States. Um, all spoken for. We, as dealers, we each turned in, we turned in lists of you know, 15 to 25 people, and we only got four, five, six cars per store. And is this a track car? Is yeah. that what this is designed for? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really going to be the, um, the ultimate... Uh, rip everybody's face off on lap times. <laughs> if you imagine that there was what a is sort the of comparable Porsche that it would be up against, like a, a GT2 RS, maybe? Yeah, I would say the GT2 RS, but I think 
you know, the thing, it's hard to compare the GT2 RS because being based off a of 911, it doesn't really have the aero, you know, that, right, that this car right. does. So it's, I would say it's more like a Ford GT or, you know, something in that level. Um, but, you know, from a price standpoint at a million dollars, it's kind of an on island. There's not a lot of cars that are base price right, a million right, dollars, right. you know. So in that regard, that's what the, the 918 debuted at, and that's what the P1 debuted at. So I'd say it's kind of going up against those two cars. And in and, and this car that's coming after, you, you mentioned, which one is that? The BP23. The BP23. I haven't seen that. Second, that's that's no, seen no one's seen it yet. The nom- nomenclature. No, but what this is bespoke <coughs> project uh, number two with three seats. Because it's got uh, the center yes, seat. Like the F1. Like the yeah. F1, right. And, and I, That's exciting. I finally got to drive an F1 this summer. You did? And it wow. was a life-affirming experience for me. Really? It's yeah, that that's good. as good as it's they that said. Good. Yeah, I've driven two now. I drove the, the long-tail GTR, and then, which is, has a sequential shifter with like a big, you know, big Broom rod. handle, yeah. yeah. It's awesome. And then, um, so that one, that one weighed 2,200 pounds and had 710 horsepower. Jesus. So imagine, so for those of you that have Porsches that are listening... It's basically a career GT on a super hardcore diet, but you sit in the middle. <laughs> it's the similar sound, same clutch, same shifter. Does it handle the same? Uh, yeah, it handles very similar, but it weighs almost 1,000 pounds less. That's the deal. It's so. really made for a guy like me with two boys. I get in the center. I got one boy on either side so they don't right. fight. And your or wife s- waves goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, so, or someone, exactly. like, someone like the rapper Pitbull who might <clears throat> want to put two girls And how in much is that car going to cost? Which which one? An the BP twenty three. Yeah, uh, the BP twenty three is going to be a Bugatti level wow. car. So in so the two, two to three. three, something like that. Wow. And know. if you wanted an F one today, is it fifteen million? Between between ten for a ratty one and twenty five for like one that won Le Mans or something like that. Holy and you got to fly the mechanics in Zuckerman. You got to bring them in. There's there's put one or up. two guys, but <laughs> we're actually working to get certified at our store in. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, in, in Arizona. So um, because my my partner on the Chicago store actually owns an F one. Wow. So, and I have a lot of friends. I actually go on the F1 tours with my P1. So what, you know, now that you're racing Porsche and you've got the, all these McLarens, what are you driving? What is your daily? What do you like? What I, did you drive down here? I drove down a 2018 GTS. Oh, uh, that's your blue one out my there. My blue the one out there, yeah. Blue so metallic. It's got the, uh, a couple d- touches to it that I like. I like blue and yellow. Manual, manual. PDK. Manual. Um, it's got silver stitching, uh, Alcantara interior. Um, it's got the carbon fiber stuff. And then it's also got the vents painted the the slats painted in blue and then the right. vents are stitched in leather wow, wow. so that's so. your personal car that's my new personal car yeah <clears throat> do you get to put dealer plates on it and just not pay sales tax and well, do that whole no, deal I, no i did a dealer employee lease actually on it so wow. i get you, the dealer employee lease is a did fantastic you negotiate program. in a mirror with yourself yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this buy rate is too high no, <laughs> let me I see your to, license yeah. i'm not giving you my license no yeah, give me your license i'll be right man. back <laughs> yeah. i gotta go to the bathroom and talk to that mayor for a second so the where did he disappear to with my the, license i actually so i was <laughs> you know i had my sales manager write it up and i was like are you trying to make are you trying to make back end money on me right here are you trying to bump me on something that's so great but um yeah no i have that i have my r still you know um i've got about 1700 miles on that what do you think about the r market right now where do you think it's heading i bumped into a guy yesterday down at santa monica airport i bought my first sticker so i don't care he proudly showed me his r and uh i think he paid in the high threes um lovely car he wasn't driving it and i said you you got to put a lot of miles on that (laughs) because that's the only thing to do with it yeah they're great to drive but i mean i think you know, is the have you driven the new uh gt3 touring class not yet no but that's an apology car Right. Have I you like driven the new GT3? That. Have you driven the new GT3 with a manual transmission? No, we haven't had one delivered yet. We're, we're going to have one coming in that looks just like this. That's I drove it, but I haven't driven the R. But I suspect what I felt in the transmission, the shifting of the gears. Are you guys coming GT3? out to Car Week? Wait, wait, hold on. Go don't, ahead. Don't try not to talk over me. What I suspect, well, it gets tough for the listener. Don't, don't give me those looks. I hear about it when everybody's just talking over each other. I suspect that gear shift is the same in the R. Like, it, describe the, the, the shifting of gears in an I-11 R. Because n- none of us... Zuckerman, you haven't even driven it. No. When I offered to sell half of my car to Zuckerman, but he's sort of like... We, 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 never, we kind of danced around the fire, but never really, never really hugged. Because we it. never decided. He, he, he wanted to sell, it, I think, the half to me at, at market price, some friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> oh, no. Not, Things okay. are getting a little heated here, yes. folks. I can see the, there's a little flushing of well, the What's What's the first deal? So I don't know if he's going to try to pound me on it because he's a lawyer. How you know, would you guys <laughs> share cars when you live in Fresno and he lives here? How would that happen? How would that work? Well, oh, last time I checked, he's got a dozen cars, so it's not like he's going to drive the car that we split daily. You know what I mean? I know, but what are you doing? Shipping it back and forth yeah. on a truck? Yeah, you've got a yeah. guy. 
I've got a, a guy. I've got a, I've got a, <laughs> we got a guy. <laughs> uh, we got a guy. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple guys. That is so. completely insane. No, the, so um, the R for me, I, I, I got mine the way I think the R should be spec'd, which is no radio, no nose lift, no BS. Um, it's the lightest combination of that you can put together. Right. You know? Um, so I, I got it because I want to drive it like a motorcycle when it, when I want to get away from everybody and I don't want to listen to anybody and I don't want Justin Bieber interrupting my commute or whatever. I, I put that on and you know, I, I, I turn on the car and I just listen to the engine for, you, you do know, have AC though. I do have AC. Smart. Yeah. I am not a savage. Is it as good as everybody says? Yeah. And is it going to be a classic? Yes. Is it worth jumping into one and holding onto it? At this price, yeah, at five fifty or something, no. But and, and, and just to clarify, I never so did what sell is a car that? at seven hundred. That was inflated. What I is did the, sell a car at five thirty five plus tax. What's the price that you could get in? Like so high, they're in the it high threes the right now. It depends right? on the spec because I like you know, I've sold paint to sample cars that are that are worth more. Right. But if someone has a white on red basic with like no good options or maybe too many dumb options, then it's gonna be, you know, a three sixty five car, three something like that. Do you like see that. them going into the high twos? Depreciate it with mileage, you know, probably. That would know. be sweet. What but if you get matter? one, I mean, yeah, with 10,000 miles on it, why would you pay the same money as one with 100 miles on it, you know? Just that, to me, is the ideal R. The R with 15,000 miles on yeah. it. Something well, that's, that's like driven, my, yeah. broken in, used. Yeah. I did actually track mine. I took it to Willow Springs and drove it on the track. Wow. Um, and it was a lot of fun because it is looser. It doesn't have as much grip. It's, it's exactly like a 964 RS with twice the horsepower. Wow. That's well, the that's car. That's a great that, – that, that's an appealing <coughs> statement. Right. And I did drive the 993 RS, and I can tell you that that is a distinct difference. As you said, the 964 RS is a better car in a You lot agree of with that, I, huh? 100%. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny, huh? Yeah. You know, this, now I'm going to say this 720 is the first McLaren that I actually like and could see myself driving. And CJ and I already talked. He's got some pretty remarkable lease figures. He does? Yeah, he does, Spike. Well, we, I, let, I let you drive the 650S, right? Remember no, when I had that yellow not. one? You did not. You know, I didn't? You did not. No, no, I had a 650S well, no, I press car. It. I've had a lot of press cars from McLaren, but I thought I'd let you drive one of them no, with, with your son, Dell. No, sir. I, you, I you guys drove the Lamborghini, the Huracan. Oh, right. That was the, that was right. Hard, huh? So you've I never got really. I sick in that thing. You've never been in the, these I've things. I've never been in the McLaren. Wow. The visibility is fantastic. So what are you suggesting, yeah. Zuckerman, that you and I now go in on a fifth car together? Plan Z. <clears throat> <laughs> plan A is your best plan. Plan B is your backup. And when you have no good reason, <laughs> we call it Plan Z. It That's is you the leading Im- the impulsive, <laughs> really ill-considered uh, acquisition. You can't, of a car. Zuckerman. By and I, now, figure it out yeah, later. Yes, exactly. We, we can't come into a place like this and not want to buy one. Of these <laughs> well, no, this, this is uh, horrifyingly beautiful around us. Well, as we're looking at all of these different cars and all of these beautiful. Do you colors. think you'd feel like a dick in a seven twenty if you were driving down no, the street I, I don't going care. to the supermarket? It's, it's, it's color. It's color specific. I think personally. I think if you. You get a color if you want something more subtle then you get like soros which it, to me i'm gonna go grab it off the wall really quick what is to, it? okay go i'm gonna show it here hold that yeah he's gonna go grab a color I, I i think a car as extreme as this has to be in an extreme color otherwise you de mclaren the whole thing well, you know i, I, I you, agree you know. with you because if, if, if our, you our mutual that crazy you got to be crazy our mutual friend uh had one in uh, an mp4 12c in that gray metallic, and I always thought well, that's, it was boring. You, it's a cop out, right? Right, it's a cop right. out. You know, it, be what you are, be not, flamboyant, be not, flamboyant. Not to put them on blast, but they don't have Soros on here, which I think <laughs> is a really good. Color. Well, here's the good news: it's an audio podcast. They wouldn't be able to see it. Yeah, but to describe it though, it's really liquidy, like mm. like metallic gray that has a little bit of blue in it. Right. Which I like, I like this blue, this Paris. Yeah, that Paris blue, blue over is here. fantastic. I, I think. happen to like the the red Velocity car. And then there's yeah. a lighter. What's the lighter blue they have? I just saw a 570 pull up in a lighter blue. Yeah. Yeah, they have. Well, that's the thing. McLaren actually has more approved paint colors than any other manufacturer. They have over 500 approved paint colors. Wow. Um, and that's kind of one of the things that people know me for is my really weird purple car that was on your TV show, the rainbow car. And um, you still have that car? Yeah, of course. I've got about 10,000 miles on it. All right. Let's go to some questions. We've got a lot of them. Uh, CJ, you're very popular. Ben Roger. Again, if you want to ask questions, just look for them on Instagram. I usually ask for them and uh, post your questions in the comment area. Even if you're just hearing this now, you have some questions, post it somewhere on my latest post, and I'll try to get to them. Ben Roger asks, what watches does CJ wear? Uh, I'm currently <laughs> wearing a Graham watch. I also a have what? A Graham. What is that, like a Graham cracker? Yeah, exactly. Spelled like Graham cracker. It's an English company. Um, it's, it's like racing-derived stuff, so all the faces oh, cool. are like carbon fiber, or they've got like these... 
stopwatch features to it. It's them. a very big watch. It on looks you. like a hand grenade. Yeah, it looks like it does. It's got I levers. Have a wide and wrist, so it doesn't. So some of the daintier watches. So you're a little, fan of their watches? I or? do. Uh, yeah, I like them a lot, and I also like the uh, the IWC. I have an IWC. Okay, uh, there you go. He master. likes that. Uh, Roger's the thesaurus. Well, uh, Porsches have been his favorite at Fred's. What's your favorite dealership? Do you have a favorite dealership? <laughs> That's like asking if I have a favorite child. <laughs> He's not going to answer <laughs> the that. The answer is, of course. He's not going to answer that question. Um, how do McLaren's uh, Enerev, our fan Emerev Zuckerman, yes. we, talk, we see him all the time. He wants to know, um, McLaren's, are they reliable and do they depreciate a lot? Well, mm. I, I think the, the big thing is that initially they only had six or seven dealers in the country. So what McLaren did was they said, we need to sell X amount of cars. So they pounded a lot of the dealers with too many cars, and it flooded the market initially on the 12C, which those did depreciate a lot. Like, I bought mine for 280 and sold it for 165 But I drove 18,000 miles on it, and I, so in that sense, I feel like I got my money. I spent my money, you know? I think a lot of people that, that buy a car and don't drive it, it's... You know, if they're worried about that type of stuff, they shouldn't be buying cars that are two or three hundred. The McLaren guys, buyers aren't really worried about depreciation, I would guess, right? Reliability-wise, how, well, how are these cars? They're very reliable if you drive them. You if know, you I think, and them, you right. have to keep the battery charged. They all have lithium batteries. The reason why Porsche discontinued the lightweight lithium battery is because people weren't charging them; they were dying. And the cars have a systemic electrical system, so like oh boy. something will go out in the radio, then some, you know, like low voltage things. Right. So if I you don't charge it up, then then you're an idiot. I heard basically. that was happening with uh, four GTs. That they have a hard to get at little battery that goes dead after two days. Wouldn't These be surprised. New Ford GTs. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, and that you, you can put them on a trickle charger or a little charger, but it's kind of a pain in the ass. You have to pull the whole front off the car to get to it. No, but there see, that's no the thing. Port. Like, there's a there's a port in the um, in the trunk in the front of these cars. Uh-huh. So you just you know put the this little. This is McLaren's. McLaren. McLaren yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you did just put you put it in there. Did we you have get all your those. Ford GT yet? Uh, not yet. No. Um, I'm still kind of debating on what color I'm going to do, but right. I have time. 2019 is going to be a really hellish year for the for the uh, checkbook and a great year for the garage right because that's right. when my that's when my senna shows up my ford gt and um probably my gt2 rs this is when we become partners on the ground floor on <coughs> these cars so this is, i'm offering you ipo uh, anything anything uh, on He's the crafty. ground floor i'm in <laughs> why what could what we are do the lease rates what 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 do you see? Wait, what oppor- you see an opportunity? Share it with me. I don't I don't wait, see wait. it. He's going to have too many good cars. <laughs> he's going to need some financial <laughs> relief. He's going to be feeling pressure. So what he's going to do is he's going to sell us half of the Ford GT half of the Santa car at his cost, like a bro. And I'm then in we're entertainment. Go, yeah. I don't I don't make the same money as you, Zuckerman. You're you're uh, uh, you're thriving well, not on with that people attitude. getting run over. <laughs> you, <laughs> no, people I, get know, run over. You, like six people have been run over on Wilshire here, and you're just making money you just, sitting you don't here. You save the same amount of money. You save <laughs> money. I don't. I'm a profligate. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. What do we have here? Does he uh, see Porsche releasing a new hypercar on the back of their LMP1 efforts to challenge the likes of the AMG Project One car? I see it. Zero percent likelihood of that. I think Porsche's big focus right now, as they're entering mission, uh, is going to be Mission E to the point that they drop their LMP program to do Formula E. So electric is the way forward for Porsche, and I think the um, like Jerry said on the on the thing that the, the GT2 RS is probably the last the last really big hurrah in the sense that hey throw everything else out there we're going to do 700 horsepower no hybrid. I think everything else from now on is going to be more and more and more electric, which is going to, mm-hmm. because of the weight situation, they're going to have to do a full electric sports car before they do another 918. Jerry was saying he believes it's what? Hydrogen balloon technology? Yeah, hydrogen, of some, <laughs> nuclear, some sort of He's saying that's capacitor. the future. Electric. Fuel, fuel, There's no, no yeah. future in electric. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hydrogen fuel cell technology actually does have the most potential because it's a renewable resource as opposed to the ah, heavy metals go. that you need to generate. Maybe these guys generate. do know something. Well, well then, why is there only one hydrogen station in L.A.? Hydrogen's dangerous. It <laughs> all get out. Blow your head right off. Which is why. Is just it like any gasoline, more? Da- it's very flammable. Yes. So if you harness that, you know, it's like you need to harness right. that. You have to harness. You can ride the lightning. Yes. Well, look, a lithium battery isn't that safe either. Those things burn like crazy. All right. Uh, here's a funny question from Dan H. Photo. Uh, he wants to know: Is it any easier to get PTS? Uh, uh, option car now that you have a dealership. <laughs> yes, completely. <laughs> to give me PTSD this, right. whole, this um, whole conversation. Paint yeah. to sample. Can you do it? Yeah. But doesn't it take, you know, we were, we have a friend who wants to order a Targa right now and wanted to do paint to sample. Does he want a pastel orange one? Because I built one of those. He might, actually. Yeah, he said he wanted an orange Targa. We're doing deals on the podcast. Is, pa- is, pas- is pastel lava 
or is no, it no, 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 no. That one is like it's, 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 it's more. It's, it's so like this. The a little orange bit, right? 4.0 that I sent you the photo of right. that we have at the store. That's pastel orange. He wants something that is either like signal orange or tangerine from an yep. early 9/11. Is that what? It's that's very like? similar. Yeah. Well, there you go. You Look at that. Car, we just yeah. email the me the information and I will loop you into Crazy Mo. If you think we're crazy, where do you meet Mo? Crazy Mo is completely out of his mind. Sleeps with his eyes open. Sleeps with his eyes open. Replaces his toilets when someone else uses them. <laughs> That's not a real thing. That is. He, when he rented, his, he rented his apartment, <laughs> he got a ton of money for it. But when those people left after you know, six months. You people that come in and clean them. I, sw- I said Lysol is He full. said it's just <laughs> as easy. everything. It's better than bleach. <laughs> it's just as easy to replace the toilets. <laughs> oh, my God. That's what he said. And we nodded like, yeah. And we went, wait a minute. No, it's <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah, what? One is just wiping it with some bleach. Right. Um, if I remember correctly, TJ's P1 was featured on Car Matchmaker. First, kudos to him for actually driving it, not letting it sit in the garage. He does drive that car a lot. Um, uh, oh, and then he wants to know what your opinion of this new McLaren Senna is. Can you go on the record? What do you think? I, uh, so I saw the car. At full because I, the, Here's yeah. the, the little issue I have, right? And I don't know much about the car yet. It's still rolling out. But I look across here at this P1, and I go, what a beautiful-looking machine that is. Yeah, one of the best-looking cars ever. And I've seen the Senna now, and it came out in two different colors. One was a little rusty-colored thing, and then there was a, a like a medium blue metallic that looked gorgeous. But the design is not as pleasing yet to my eye. I, I, I'm gonna I'm looking through He's my phone show right the now. the listeners a picture. But I'm, is it? Uh, I would, do is I would guess you're gonna be Spikes able Instagram. to explain it. You can. You know, folks can Google the uh, yeah, McLaren Senna I, I, right I now and look at it. It looks like it's designed to go fast, but it may not be designed to look beautiful. I think the key is... See this back? This it's funny. I right see there. 918 and Carrera GT in there. Yeah, that's true. See in the, that shot. The mid-engine hypercar formula is like an elongated frame. You know, the, right. the, the issue that a lot of people have is the front overhang, which you, you, you need to get because it has a lot of active downforce generators. But the, the thing that I thought was a little strange, to be honest with you, I felt like the rear wing, it's, it's literally directly above the axle for maximum downforce. Right. I thought it was going to be a little bit pushed off the back of the car like the, the P1 GTR which I feel like is the most beautiful solution personally. So I think sometimes they got to I think they got to the point where they said, "Hey, you know what? We could probably make a, more downforce if we do it this way and th- then then therefore make more downforce out of the front end of the car and just lap times will fall down and we're just going to be about that cuz like So it's just going to kick what's ass. What's this thing going to cost? A, uh, a mill out the door uh with uh, after options is going to be the um is going to be the sticker price. And uh, wow. you know, with only 120 in the states, they brought 144 P1s mm. here, so and they only made 375 worldwide. So I think there is going to be a big enough demand. I've got uh, you know 20 people that want it. Are you going to get one? Yeah, I have one coming. <laughs> you want to share? Uh, I might have already worked out a pre-draft deal, <laughs> just in case. But I'm I'm going to get the GTR That's version. That's a lot of money, Zuck. I mean, yeah. you're uh, feeling good. No, I it's just, the end I of the like year. Deals. No, I just like Let's making deals. Let's do a deals. deal. Let's do a deal. Let's but do a deal. We're, we're not, but Don't no, you know you're addicted to deals I more than cars? I thought we were going to do a deal on the GT2. That's the one I thought we were going to do a deal on. We really? have a deal on the GT2 You have a GT2? RS. Yeah, the, my okay. silver one. Yeah. 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 No, no, I'm he's, oh, wait, wait, were you talking about different cars here? No, no, no. I'm we're talking about the GT2 RS? Yes. He's talking about the, the 993. G- yeah. The 993 oh, GT2. Yes, yeah, yeah, a different car. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, what I'm color? also trying to get a Valkyrie as well. but that's What story. color is What's the... What's a Valkyrie? The Aston. You want that? Oh, my God, yeah. Why? It's the best looking one out of everything. Boy, it's he's pr- really in a DuPont registry cycle. Just he really is soon he's going to be getting those special dogs that play chess. <laughs> the dogs <laughs> that play chess. The whole thing. You've seen in the DuPont registry that, that <laughs> the wife and the, the, the centerfold is the two wives from Russia. You can get all yeah. of them right. to come in. You get the pool, special mate. pool table. I do a couch made out if of you, a if, we have any, if we have any listeners. The prefab shed if, if, from if, England if, no, to put the, the cars in. No, the best one is the uh, the portable bomb shelter. That, that, right. that Portable <laughs> bomb shelter. <laughs> yeah, you got to get that. That's a good one. You, you know? got to get the uh, yeah. disaster pod and the F- that you zip up. Right. F-16 rolling chair. Yeah. You got to be careful on the DuPont registry cycle because that's all the new stuff. That's yeah. expensive. That gets expensive well, really fast. Well, there's old stuff that's expensive, too. I mean, like a, it's not like a, uh, a 73 RS is, is pocket change these All days. All right. Before know? we go, CJ, for the, uh, the folks out there, not, not everybody can be CJ Wilson. Not everybody can be the real Zuckerman. What, what about the <laughs> folks that just want to collect a car? They want something cool. Maybe they have $5,000 or less. What's an RX, a uh, vintage RX-7? What, what are Never. some cool, cool. 
kind of really cheap cars that you can drive and have a good time that you really respect their engineering that, that you would uh, let's say you just don't have a lot of money and you want something like that or, you know because you don't have that you have an RX-7 right I'm yeah. trying to remember all the other you yeah, have a 93 cars. RX-7 uh, great car you can get you know if you don't live in California you can get a um, a 25 year old Skyline right hand drive for like $20,000 alright that's still too much no 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 but I mean 5000 <laughs> down you gotta work for it right you know right I mean? right I'll, I'll do a loan okay, on that. Okay, I'll, I'll I'm going to tell you Wait, wait, you're d- selling that stuff? Yeah, we'll sell it. We sell all sorts of stuff like that. I sell, I mean, I think. Where we, do we look for vintage? I, I've never even been on a site of yours that has vintage cars. Where, where, do, I, where do I go to, to do that? Because that, that's, that that's more of an email me and I'll find it for you. Because I think it, it requires more digging. There's not as much money so, in it. So you, so a guy with all these dealerships, I'm going to send you an email and you're going to go hunting cars for me? That's what he likes. I do it for everybody. He, that's what he likes the best. Yeah, some guy came in and said, I really want an E36, you know, like a 96 E36 two-door. I said, right. what color? Yeah, he puts aside the 15 dealerships for all that big business. <laughs> I understand that, too, because I like that, too. And say, yeah, I want to make $2,000 right, getting this right. guy a car. Yeah, yeah. He gets hunt. off on that. Yeah, I, I, that's and nice. I, I respect that. I like so, that. Sometimes it's more difficult than others, you know, but if someone comes in and says, like, this happens as well. Someone says, I want a LaFerrari, you know, and it just depends on what it is. I don't have one, but I'll go get one. You Are know? you still doing those crazy European trips where you're searching for cars and opening barns? And Yeah. Yeah. That's the best thing ever. How many times a year do you do that? Uh, I go and to Europe about five or six times a year. And what have you found that's been... What, what are some of your most exciting finds? GT1. Wow. Where GT1 was that? In, at, in France. And what, um, where in France? Like in a, it's kind of a... I don't want to talk about in it. In an Alpine mountain region. No, no, no. It was actually... There's, I, there was, they, had, they had two or three of them at this location, actually. It was a... Two or three. Jeez. Yeah. And um, how do you hear about something like that? Um, this is the thing. When you... You have to have... A extensive background in these this echelon of cars, right. and that's the problem. Is that that's why I have to keep playing the game on the Senna and the, and the BP twenty three and the Bugattis and stuff because that way um, I stay I, I stay invited. Right. You know, right. You, if you don't drink the Kool Aid, d- people don't invite you to the party anymore. So right. it's like if if I all of a sudden sold all my my air cooled cars, you know, Jerry would have nothing to do with me, or you'd have nothing to do with me. You know, that's I'd not be true. dead to you. So we're not like, like that because he likes water cooled cars. He might not right, be but invited. I understand to what he's saying. He wants to stay credible with his with the audience. He wants yeah. to right, be right. part of the club. Well, yeah, so, you're so selling I have stuff. to stay current with the hypercar guys. And I love that as an excuse to keep buying cars. You he's, know, he sees right through me. Yeah. 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 What yeah. if Honey, you showed I up have to spend another two million dollars? What if you showed up to one of these private hypercar guy events and everybody had their shirt off? What would you do? <laughs> are we at what the if beach? that's what the hypercar world are we about? at the beach <laughs> no you're not you're in a study and everybody's wearing masks <laughs> i'd excuse it's myself if it was a world i don't so, i don't think i want to be part of that world well i guess if you're looking for a car under five thousand dollars you're screwed i'm talking you today i would, I would a mustang you get yourself a mustang yeah no, no, five i I'd, I'd say just go get a go get a used ducati Ooh, that's oh, not a bad idea. That's oh, a re- it is a bad idea. <clears throat> a terrible Why? idea. Because most I'm people- putting money in his pocket right now with this suggestion. And I understand that. But, but I, I think that's I, a good suggestion. It's a pretty thrilling uh, most thing. Most people are not machine capable owned. of driving that safely. That's a, that's a dangerous, this, it's a valid but dangerous suggestion. There's no such thing as a safe $5,000 car anymore either. So, uh, okay. I mean, most of them are going to have no airbags. and like. But I hear what you're saying. That maybe you want to start. Bars. You know, that's when I was uh, going off to college. I, ha- I didn't have a lot of money to spend. And that's what I bought. I bought a motorcycle. I yeah. bought a, a little Ninja ZX 600 R, yeah. and I was in love. But it you can was, get boy, the performance was a, amazing. You can get a legit 180 mile an hour motorcycle for five grand, no problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so in terms of thrilling, that's the most thrill I, you can have. I always say Volkswagens too. Look at the the old Beetles. Look at the old air cooled Volkswagens. Those mm-hmm. are inexpensive, maybe the, not five or less, but they they're, they're going to give you a little bit of a 356 experience. Five or less. That's a, that's such a such well, a that's small why I'm asking. Limbo that's under. why everybody's looking. Do you do you collect old cars anymore? Do you have um, any old stuff? No, you know I'm, I'm I the cars that I really really want are some of the '70s cars. You know I really like the '60s and '70s Porsches and the. Um, you still on a 300 SL Roadster? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, but it's like I have to kind of prioritize. This there you go, want, Zuckerman. You, know? you could give half of that car to him. You know I love that car. Else. That changed my whole perception on everything because as Spike's been trying to pound me on the Speedster for a while and say, <laughs> Speedster, Speedster, Speedster. That's and all. Eli is like, um, Eli's like, oh, it's a one-car collection. It's the best car you can get or it whatever. Is. But it, he I loves just, to steal our lines, doesn't he? he? Oh, of course, yeah. Brand. Like He's Zuckerman just, stole mine a minute ago with the dogs playing chess. But, <laughs> <laughs> but for me, the 300 SL is the top. Uh, that's the top. It's incredible. Car. His car is incredible. Who Do you own that outright? 
Is that your car? Or do you share that with somebody? I share already? that. Oh, you do. Oh well, yeah, yeah. That's probably the most beautiful thing in any of our collections. That car. It's just absolutely stunning yeah. as it goes down the road, and it's mind-boggling. And you drove it right, CJ. You 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 put your foot in it, and that's where that car wow. reacts. Yeah, it's it's it was so smooth and so modern res- in terms of the throttle response. I was blown away because I'm so used to like a chuggy. Kind of gurgly well, engine. Because, you know? of course, that car was the first <clears throat> car with direct injection. Off the Messerschmitt. Oh, off the Messerschmitt. Right? The Bosch direct injection, for uh, first and last direct injection for 50 years. Yeah, and it, it, it's, it's, it's a shame that I would say most of the people that own those probably don't drive them often. But in terms of public awareness, because I think that we need to see those cars around. Because the thing that you said that I, I thought was really great was you said, you know, there's a sort of like movie star like grace to this car that you don't get in a lot of these other mm-hmm. cars of that value. Once you get into that seven figure range, it, half those cars, like you said about the one of these or something like that, or maybe you know you get that sort of like Lambo driver kind of sneer from somebody. Like they see somebody in a 488 revving their engine, they're like, oh, look at this guy, you know. But in a in a in a SL, you're just like, wow, that's good luck to that guy. He's 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 got it all going. Well, I can know? see there's going to be a deal here at some point. These two guys are going to start dealing. We're out of time, gentlemen. CG, I want to thank you for trekking all the way down here and uh, doing the podcast here at McLaren. Uh, the Ogara. McLaren by Ogara is what they're calling this place now. It's, uh, it's stunning to be around these beautiful cars. It's dangerous. It's stunning. If you're in town, come check them out. I bet you that P1 GTR stays here for uh, for at least a few months. That thing is absolutely gorgeous. It must be big dollars. <clears throat> or is that just is that or did McLaren That's a customer give, car. It's a customer yeah, car. Yeah, I know whose car that is. I don't CJ, where can we all catch up with you? On Instagram, you're yeah. CJ Wilson photo, right? Yeah. Why he, are you CJ Wilson photo? He's, he's like three things, right? I know, but well, what's your main thing? What's the main shit if McLaren people want to get in Dad. touch with you? McLaren Dad is the car one. McLaren car Dad. Only. Okay. Yeah. McLaren yeah. Dad, Zuckerman, you're at the real Zuckerman if you've been injured. <laughs> Reach you know, out. Do you even advertise your firm? You're just doing so well that you don't I, even have to advertise anymore. We, we, I've seen the old YouTube ad. Was there a YouTube? Oh ad? yeah, you can. You, I, yeah, I've Googled, Googled that. Johnny I and I, to, my, I ex- explain you to p- other people, and it's say, hard like, to. Yeah, Matt Farrer does a good impression of me on the on the smoking tire. I, I didn't think it was so good. I think I'm far better doing oh, Zuckerman than better. Zuckerman. And, and uh, what I'm starting to hear when we're out in Malibu having our private coffee. Is people coming up and going, oh, I, I, I want to meet you, Zuckerman, because I had this idea of how you looked by your voice and you don't look like that. <laughs> well, I, you, <laughs> Which is a radio thing. Good or bad, we don't know. I, I think don't. it's that's just a radio thing. Anybody, you can never figure out what someone looks like over the radio but you know, or if on you a ask somebody or, what they think, If you ask the owner of the voice what they think they <laughs> look like to people who are listening, it's a really good psychology test. Because yeah, yeah. no one's going to say to you, I think I look really handsome the way I sound on the nose. I, I, I say I look like a, a vile old ogre. No, <laughs> you're a not. horrible creature. Some of the cartoon <laughs> version of the podcast. <laughs> right. You're yeah. not a base professional baseball player like CJ, but you're not a vile old ogre. I think you're an affable. Uh, Some of the uh, comments are pretty vile, but I yes. like that though. That's, yes, I think, that's who he is. He acts like it's like it's on purpose in in a, in a way of like some sort of like this is how I am. But I think it's he likes to act like that to be funnier because that's. that's I think this is a little spillover from how he's talking to other lawyers on the phone and making the money. I, I think this I is. Love I think a little spillover into well, real you life. You have to fly project. On the wall. You have to. You he, have to. Yes, he's he's constantly about winning these negotiations, and then you can't. As you know, when you finish a game, you're, you're shot out into space at 100 miles an hour. And, and he comes out of those negotiations in the courtroom, and he's still in animal mode. <laughs> and it takes him a few hours to come I've down. And those are the best the, hours. I've always said the attributes that make me successful in the law game <laughs> do not make me very comfortable as a human being. Well, he's a killer. And if you need help, well, that kind of help. Zuckerman is your man. You can check out uh, at Spike Ferriston on Instagram. That's where I am most active. And uh, we have next week. I don't know who we have next week, but we'll have another episode of Spike's Car Radio. We'll see you then. Here's some useful car tips you might not be aware of. A coffee filter and a little bit of olive oil can clean your interior. Removing excess weight from your car will improve gas mileage, and you can place your key fob to your chin. That's right, the chin on your face to increase its range. 
weird, right? Well, here's another tip you also might not know about. True Car also helps people get used cars. That's right. True Car isn't just for buying new cars. With their certified dealer network and nationwide inventory of nearly 1 million used cars, you'll enjoy real pricing on actual inventory and a simpler buying experience whether you buy new or used. And with True Car, users can see what others paid so they know if they're getting a good deal before buying. They're also more likely to enjoy a faster buying experience by connecting with True Car certified dealers. When you're ready to buy a new or used car, check out True Car and enjoy your more confident car buying experience. Some features not available in all states. Thanks for listening to Spikes Car Radio. Download new episodes every Wednesday on the Podcast One app or subscribe now at Apple Podcasts or PodcastOne.com. When Cynthia came to TurboTax, she had just launched her new side gig, a true crime podcast. I'm a first-rate detective with a golden voice. As her TurboTax expert, I made her second income count by guaranteeing 100% accurate filing and her maximum refund. <clears throat> What did she do with that refund? Find out next week. Switch to Intuit TurboTax and make your moves count. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com guarantees. Experts only available with TurboTax Live.